Today, I'm talking about three mistakes that leave you vulnerable to identity theft and tax scams. Keep your financial life on track. Put up another percentage. You think you're a smart investor? Hey, I'm Scott, certified financial planner at Weiss Financial Group. Thanks for tuning in or watching on the replay. If you're there, give me a thumbs up to let me know. So this is a topic that is uh, particularly important this time of year. And despite all the media attention, tax scams, uh, along with identity theft, continue to plague the American public, especially this time of year. Now, I don't want you to be the next victim. So here are three mistakes you might be making that could leave you open to ID theft or tax scams. So mistake number one is emailing sensitive information. This is a huge, huge mistake. Uh, these are things like your social security number, copies of your driver's license, voided checks, any non-public information. What do I mean by that? I mean, anything that you can't just Google about yourself or find out about yourself online. Um, anything that's private, non-public information, you do not want to be sending via email. Now, how do you get around this, particularly if your tax preparer, your financial advisor, you know, needs this information? Um, so if they, if they do request this information, ask if they have an encrypted email service. If not, you know, um, use a, see if they have a secure uh, portal that you can uh, upload documents to that's an encrypted portal. Uh, that's, that's actually what we use here. Um, now, if they don't have either of these things, then the best thing to do is deliver the documents by hand or, or give them, you know, call and give them the information over the phone. But um, do, not, uh, do not use e email for this, for this type of information. Now, mistake number two is responding to a phone call from the IRS saying that you owe them money. And, you know, this one drives me crazy because there's so much media coverage every year and yet people continue to fall for this scam. You know, first off, uh, keep in mind that the IRS will never call your house unless you're already working with an agent, right? So if you get one of these calls, you know, don't call them back. I can assure you it's a scam. So for those of you who have never uh, received one of these calls, I found a sample on YouTube, uh, a sample call on YouTube that I'd like to share with you. So if you do come home and find one of these on your voicemail, don't call them back. But uh, here it goes. Let me see if I can play it for you. Hi, this message is intended to contact you. My name is Steve Martin, and I'm calling regarding an enforcement action executed by U.S. Treasury intending your serious attention. Ignoring this will be an intentional second attempt to avoid initial appearance before a magistrate, judge, or a grand jury for a federal criminal offense. My number is 904-638-9127. I repeat, 904-638-9127. I advise you to cooperate with us and help us to help you. Thank you. Okay, so I, I know I've received a call like this. I've known several people that have. That's what it sounds like. You know, it is totally uh, fictitious. It's phony. It's a scam. Don't call them back. Um, they, you know, the IRS is not going to harass you over the, over the phone in that, in that way. So, um, you know, hopefully you heard it and you stay away from these things. So the final mistake, mistake number three, is clicking on an email from the IRS or a bank um, requesting personal information or non-public information like I talk, talked about earlier. I haven't been seeing as much of these lately, uh, but it doesn't mean that they, they aren't out there. Emails are incredibly easy to forge, and it's easy to make them look like they're coming from your bank or the IRS. Just remember that the IRS uh, will not send you a threatening email, just like they're not going to uh, call you and leave a threatening, threatening voicemail. Um, so if you receive one of the, if, if you do receive one of these, don't open it. Um, and if you do open it, don't click on anything. Don't hit a reply because uh, there could be viruses uh, uh, in in those emails. Um, and, you know, if you do, one of the other things that sometimes happens is you get an email from some place that looks like it's your bank and they're asking for a social security number or some other kind of non-public information like I talked about earlier. You know, don't reply to that. Don't give that to them. Now, unfortunately, the elderly tend to be uh, victims 
you know, uh, quite frequently. So, you know, pass this along to, you know, your, your parents, your, old, your, your grandparents. Um, those are the ones that unfortunately fall victim to this uh, more often than not. So I hope this gives you the ammo you need to protect yourself from these scammers. Um, get the word out, share this video with anybody you think, uh, you know, could benefit. Um, and, you know, definitely, you know, tell grandma, you know, to stay away from these things. So I hope to see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you're there again, give me a thumbs up and I will talk to you next week.